What's up guys, Leon here, welcome back to Tesla on Mare. This video is about a device that most of you have already seen on my channel. But this time it's not a Tesla call. I don't know about you guys, but I really like browsing through a store called AliExpress. By the way, this is my unlimited MOSFET source. Anyway, sometimes you can find their cool new gadgets like small Tesla calls, driver circuits and so on. For a little money. For me as a student, it's perfect. A few months ago, I was browsing through AliExpress again. I was looking for Tesla calls. <laughs> what else? After some time of searching, a product kept catching my eyes, which looks very familiar to me. I knew this kind of call combination. This was not a Tesla call. For me it looked like... Hmm. Like an EMP jammer. Five turns with a sick wire, about 50 with a thin wire. For four dollars? That's unbelievable. Even transistors like the 2SC2078 are more expensive. Of course, I ordered the little device directly to chat with you. As usual, when ordering from China, half of a century has passed by. However, fortunately for me, the little modules arrived just fine. I ordered 5 right away, since the lifetime of such devices is not particularly high in my lab. Let's have a look at such a module. The first thing we notice are the two calls. The big one with thick wire has around about 6 turns, the small one, which is around around the thick wire, has about 43 turns. The curls are fixed together with hot glue and tape. This somehow reminds me of my early days. What else do we have? A screw terminal. Since the upper end of the sick coil is connected to it, I guess the connector is for an antenna. Also noticeable is the transistor, which sits on a heatsink in the heart of the coil. Check it out, they just sanded away the labeling of the transistor. It seems like it is a big secret. Hmm, mysterious. The transistor is held by this connector. Let's remove it. Cool, SMD components. Here we have three capacitors, four resistors and one LED. But actually only two resistors because these three resistors here are connected in parallel. And two capacitors because these two capacitors are also in parallel. The two capacitors will probably be part of the resonant circuit. So one resistor, two. The other resistor protects the LED from a too high current flow. The LED just indicates if the device is on or not. I'm pretty sure that this schematic was used. I think most of you have already seen it on my channel. It's quite simple. This circuit is called capacitive 3-point oscillator or cold pits oscillator. The 10k ohm resistor pulls the base of the transistor too high. This causes the circuit start to oscillate. C1 and C2 in combination with L1 are creating an oscillating circuit. L1 is inductively coupled with L2. Energy is inductively pumped from L1 into L2. A feedback signal is fed back into the base of the transistor via the bottom of L2. The circuit oscillates. Through resonance transformation a high potential builds up at the top of L2. A strong electric as well as a magnetic field is emitted. It's really amusing to read how many people think this circuit is fake. Yes, there's an incredible amount of bullshit here on YouTube, but this circuit is definitely not part of it. Back to our module. It's not clear where our power supply can be connected, but there's a hint on the website though. I now sold a 1 cable for plus and one for minus to the PCB. We will start powering the PCB with 12 volts and then we go up until the transistor die. You should definitely not touch the device during operation at all because you can get a high frequency burn. With an input voltage of 15 volts we can excite a fluorescent lamp to light up. Very cool, isn't it? The transistor stays cold. Let's turn up the voltage. That's not bad already, but it could be even better. Now let's build an antenna. With an antenna the circuit should work a lot better. 
For this, we take a rigid copper wire and wind a spiral coil with it. We now solder a M3 screw to the lowest side of the antenna. Done. Now let's test at which voltage the device starts oscillating. Wow, it starts at 2.2 volts. At 14 volts, the electrical field is strong enough to light up the lamp. I now turn up the voltage again. Wow, that's powerful. Let's see if we can pull an arc. Not bad, but my homemade device works much better. By the way, the circuit oscillates at a frequency of 46 MHz. <sighs> yes guys, that wasn't bad at all, considering the small modules cost only $4. But in my opinion, do it yourself is still the better option. This brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, leave me a comment down below. And then guys, we'll see us in the next video.